How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, August 26th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Wednesday, August 25th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that's going on today as we navigate the world of sports one day at a time. Starting off in Wrigley, as that was the only doubleheader of yesterday in Chicago as the Cubs took on the Colorado Rockies. In the first matchup of this doubleheader, the Rock the Cubs would end up beating the Rockies 5-2 after coming from behind. Austin Romine's solo home run, his first of the season, would end up tying the game at two at the bottom of the fourth. And it would be a three-run home run from Patrick Wisdom to give the Cubs win of the of game one of this of this doubleheader. For the Rockies yesterday in game one, the loss went to their starting pitcher, Austin Gomber. Gomber allowed five earned runs and four point two innings pitched as he would go on to strike out eight batters on the day with this loss Austin Gomber is nine and eight on the season and in the Rockies lineup nobody on the team hit had more than one hit their first baseman who was on a hot streak CJ Crone would go one for three with an RBI and a run he would hit his 22nd home run of the season for the Cubs in game one the start went to Zach Davies Davies allowed two earned runs and 4.2 innings pitched as he struck out six the win was given to the Cubs' first relief pitcher, Cody Hoyer. He finished out the fifth and sixth innings for Chicago. He allowed no earned runs in that span, and with this win, he's 5-2 and two on the season. And the first save of the season will go to Adam Morgan, as Morgan allowed no earned runs in the seventh inning. In the Cubs' batting lineup, their second baseman, David Bodie, would end up going two for three with an RBI and a run. He had his eighth home run of the year. And their catcher, Austin Romine, went two for three with an RBI and a run. He hit his first home run of the season. With this win, it carried them into the second game of this doubleheader. And the Rockies would end up beating the Cubs 13 to 10 as this game went all the way to the 10th inning where the Rockies would outscore the Cubs by four runs to pick up their 58th win of the season and at least even up the doubleheader. As in the 10th inning, it would be a two-run home run from Ryan McMahon and a two-run double from Brendan Rodgers to extend their lead. For the Chicago Cubs in this matchup, the start was given to Justin Steele. Justin Steele allowed four earned runs and 3.2 innings pitched as he did not finish the fourth. He would strike out five batters on the day, and the clo- or the loss would end up going to the Cubs' closer in Game 2, Jake Jewell. Jewell allowed four runs in the 10th inning as he was unable to strike out a batter, and with this loss, he's 0-2 on the year. And in the Cubs batting, I'm sorry, the Cubs outscored the Rockies 4-1 to in the 10th inning, not the 11th. I don't know if I said the 11th. But regardless, in the Cubs batting lineup, their first baseman, Frank Schwindel, went 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run. Uh, and their left fielder, Ian Happ, went 2-5 for five with three RBIs and a run as he had his 15th home run of the year. Additionally, their right fielder, Jason Hayward, went 2-5 for five with a run. For the Colorado Rockies in Game 2, the star went to Herman Marquez. He allowed five earned runs in the first three innings of the game as he struck out three. Uh, he would The win would go to the Rockies' setup relief pitcher, Ben Bowden. He would allow no earned runs in, the, as in 1.1 innings pitched as he pitched the eighth and ninth innings for Colorado, and he would go on to strike out two batters in that stretch. With this win, he is three and two on the year. In the Rockies batting lineup, their left fielder, Connor Joe, went two for four with four RBIs and two runs. He hit his eighth home run of the season. Their second baseman, Brendan Rodgers, went three for six with five RBIs and a run as he hit his 10th home run of the year. With the or I'm sorry, and then last but not least, their center fielder, Garrett Hampson, went two for four with three runs. With this loss and win, the Colorado Rockies are now 58-69. and 69. That is the fourth best record in the National League West. They've won six of their last 10 games, and they now trail the San Francisco Giants by 24 and a half games in the division. Um, and with this win and loss, the Chicago Cubs are now 56 and 73. That is the fourth best record in the National League Central. They've lost six of their last 10 as they now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 29 games in the division. Uh, jumping out to St. Louis, the St. Louis Cardinals hosted the Detroit Tigers in this American League, National League, Interleague matchup. And after the Tigers would tie the game up at the top of the ninth, thanks to a Harold Castro RBI single, it would be a walk-off RBI single from Lars Newtbar to give the Cardinals win number 64 of the season in the bottom of the 10th. For the Detroit, or the Cardinals would beat the Tigers 3-2. to 
For the Detroit Tigers, the start was given to Tarek Skubal. He allowed two earned runs and only three hits in only in the first five innings of the game as he struck out 10. The loss would go to the former American League Rookie of the Year, Michael Fulmer, as he allowed one run in .2 innings pitch as he was unable to finish the 10th. With this loss, he's 5-6 and six on the season. And in the Tigers batting lineup, their first baseman, Jonathan Scope, went 3-4 for four with an RBI. Their second baseman, Willie Castro, went 2-4 for four, as those were the only two players with more than one hit. For the St. Louis Cardinals, however, the star was given to John Lester. He allowed one earned run in the first five innings of the game as he struck out four. The win was given to the Cardinals' closer on the day, TJ McFarland, as McFarland allowed no earned runs in the 10th inning. He would he, he would walk a batter, but with this win, he's now 3-0 and on the season. In the Cardinals' batting lineup, their elite first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt, went 2-4 for four with two RBIs and three runs. He had his 20th and 21st home runs of the season with his two hits. And the only other player with a multi-hit game was their right fielder, Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond went 2-4 for four for St. Louis. With this win, the Cardinals are now 64-61. and 61. That is the third best record in the National League Central. They've won five of their last 10 games, and they now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 13 games in the division. With this loss, the Detroit Tigers are now 61-67. and 67. That is the third best record in the American League Central. They've lost six of their last 10 games. They now trail the Chicago White Sox by 12 games in the division. Jumping out to... Houston, the Houston Astros, who are currently leading the AL West, hosted the Kansas City Royals, and they were able to, first of all, tie the game at the bottom of the eighth at five, thanks to an RBI single from Michael Brantley, and then in the bottom of the tenth, they would walk it off as Jake Myers grounded out, and Alex Bregman would make it home just in time for the Astros to pick up a big win, their 75th of the year. For the Kansas City Royals, the star was given to Mike Miner. He allowed three earned runs in the first six innings of the game as he allowed six hits. He struck out three batters on the day, and the loss was given to the Kansas City Royals. Closer for the day, Joel Payams. Payams allowed one run in .1 inning pitch as he was unable to finish the ninth. With this loss, he's 0-3 on the year. In the Royals batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Whit Merrifield, went two for five with four RBIs on a run. He hit his ninth home run of the season. Their elite designated hitter, Salvador Perez, went one for four with an RBI and a run. He hit his 34th home run of the year. Their first baseman, Hunter Dozier, went two for four. Their center fielder, Michael Taylor, went two for four with a run. And for the Houston Astros, the start was given to Lance McCullers Jr. He allowed four earned runs and five innings er, as he was unable to finish the seventh, and he would allow five hits and 6.2 innings pitched he would strike out seven the win however would go to the Astros closer on the day Kendall Graveman he would pitch the entirety of the 10th inning striking out a batter and with this win he's now 5-0 and for Houston in the Astros batting lineup their designated hitter Jordan Alvarez went two for five with an RBI and a run he hit his 26th home run of the season their elite third baseman Alex Bregman went two for five with an RBI and a run their right fielder Kyle Tucker went two for five and then their center fielder, Jake Myers, went two for five with an RBI and a run. With this win, the Houston Astros are now 75-52. and 52. That is the best record in the American League West. They've won their last two games, and they've won five of their last ten. They currently sit five games ahead of the second-place Oakland Athletics in the division. And in the playoff picture, they are holding on to the second seed, sitting behind the Tampa Bay Rays leading out in the East. And they are sitting ahead of these third seed Chicago White Sox, who are currently leading the Central at the moment. With this loss, the Kansas City Royals are now 56 and 70. Speaking of the AL Central, the Royals are now fourth in that division as they have now lost their last two games. They've lost three of their last 10, and they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 16 games in the division. Jumping out to Baltimore, the Baltimore Orioles hosted the LA Angels and the team holding the worst record in the American League was able to snap its 19 game losing streak by beating the Angels 10 to 6 in comeback fashion. Uh, the, A the Angels would take a 6 to 2 lead in the top of the fourth, but after a good amount of coming back, it would be the eighth inning where the Orioles would turn everything around. They would tie it as Ramon Urias drew a walk. They would take a lead as Kelvin Gutierrez walked. And then Austin Hayes would have a two-run double to increase their lead to three. And then Cedric Mullins' a sacrifice fly would make it 10 to give the Orioles their 39th win, give, making it the longest or ending the longest losing streak in the league this season. 
for the Los Angeles Angels in this matchup. The start went to their all-star starting pitcher, Otani Shohei. He allowed four earned runs and five innings pitched as he struck out seven. The loss would go to their third relief pitcher, Jake Patrika. Patrika allowed four earned runs in .2 innings pitched. Uh, he would go on to finish out the seventh inning for LA. He would pick up his first blown save of the season, and he is now 0-1-1 on the year. In the Angels batting lineup, their center fielder, Brandon Marsh, would end up going three for four with five RBIs on a run as he would go on to hit his first home run of the season. And then their left fielder, Joe Adele, went two for four. For the for the Baltimore Orioles in this matchup, the start was given to Chris Ellis. He pitched the first three innings of the game as he allowed three earned runs and struck out three. The win was given to the Baltimore Orioles setup relief pitcher Tanner Scott. Scott allowed no earned runs in .2 innings pitched as he struck out one batter to finish out the eighth inning. With this win, he's now 10-4 and four on the season. And in the Orioles batting lineup, their all-star center fielder Cedric Mullins went two for four with three RBIs and a run. He hit his 26 second home run of the season. Their right fielder, Anthony Santander, went three for four with an RBI and three runs as he had his 14th home run of the season. Their left fielder, DJ Stewart, would end up going one for two with two RBIs and two runs as he hit his 11th home run of the season. With this win, the Baltimore Orioles are now 39 and 86. They have, of course, won only one of their last 20 games as they now trail the Tampa Bay Rays by 39 games in the division. That is the gap between the best, the best and worst teams in the American League. It is 39 games. With this loss, the Los Angeles Angels are now 63-65. and 65. That is the fourth best record in the American League West. They've now lost five of their last 10 games as they now trail the Houston Astros by 12 and a half games in the American League West division. Jumping out to Pittsburgh, the Pirates hosted the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Diamondbacks were able to beat the Pirates 5-2 to two after the Pirates scored their first two runs of the game of the fourth and fifth inning. The Diamondbacks would tie it up in the top of the top of the sixth thanks to a home run from Pavin Smith and a single from David Peralta. And it would be a Carson Kelly solo home run in the top of the seventh that would give the Diamondbacks the lead they would run away with. For the Pirates, the start was given to Bryce Wilson. He allowed no earned runs in the first five innings of the game. He only allowed two hits in that span. He struck out seven on the day. The loss was given to the Pirates' second relief pitcher, Anthony Banda. Banda allowed one earned run and 1.2 innings pitched. He would finish out the sixth and seventh innings for Pittsburgh, respectively. Uh, and he would strike out one batter in that span. He picked up his third blown save of the season. And with this loss, he's 2-1 and one on the year. In the Pirates' batting lineup, the only player with more than one hit was their right fielder, Gregory Polanco. He went two for four with a run. And for the Arizona Diamondbacks, the start was given to Tyler Gilbert. Tyler Gilbert allowed two earned runs and five innings pitched as he struck out four. The win was given to Arizona's first relief pitcher, Brett DeHayes. DeHayes allowed one earn, or no earned runs and one inning pitch as he pitched the entire sixth inning. He allowed one hit in the sixth and struck out one. With this win, he's now three and two on the season. The save was given to the Diamondbacks closer for the day, Tyler Clipper. He allowed one run and then or he allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out one batter. That was his fifth save of the season. And in the Diamondbacks batting lineup, their left fielder, David Peralta, went three for four with two RBIs. With this win, the Arizona Diamondbacks are now 43-85. and 85. That is the worst record in the National League West. Uh, just to give a sense of where they sit, they sit 40 games behind the San Francisco Giants in the division just to get a sense of what the gap is between the best and worst team in the National League. And with this loss, the Pittsburgh Pirates are now 46-81. and 81. That is the worst record in the National League Central and the second worst record in the National League. They've lost six of their last 10 games and they now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 32 games in the division. Jumping out to Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Phillies hosted the Tampa Bay Rays, the holders of the best record in the American League. And after going and after finishing the bottom of the eighth inning tied at four, the Rays would win this game seven to four after a Francisco Mejia three run home run in the top of the ninth would help them win game them would help them win their 79th game of the season. For the Philadelphia Phillies in this game, the start and the loss went to their starting pitcher Zach Wheeler. He allowed seven runs in the first eight innings of the game as he struck out 10 with this loss Wheeler is 10 and 9 on the season in the Phillies batting lineup their elite right fielder Bryce Harper went two for three with two RBIs on a run as he had his 24th home
home run of the season. Their left fielder, former National League MVP Andrew McCutcheon, went two for four with a run. And then their third baseman, Ronald Torres, went two for three for the day. For the Tampa Bay Rays, the start was given to Ryan Yarbrough. Ryan Yarbrough allowed two earned runs and four innings pitched, and the win was given to the Rays' closer on the day, Colin McHugh. McHugh would allow one earned run in the seventh or in the eighth and ninth innings, as he would blow his first save of the season, and he would pick up his first or he would pick up his fifth win. He's now five and one. In the Rays batting lineup, their elite shortstop Wander Franco went three for five with two runs as he extends the league's longest active hitting st- or on base streak. Their third baseman Joey Wendell went two for five with a run. Their first baseman Yandy Diaz went two for four with an RBI and a run. Additionally, their catcher Francisco Mejia went two for four with three RBIs and a run as he had his sixth home run of the season in the top of the ninth. With this win, the Tampa Bay Rays are now 79-48. and 48. That is the best record in the American League East. They've won their last four games, and they've won eight of their last 10. They have the best record in the American League as well. They sit four and a half games ahead of the second-place New York Yankees in their division. And right now, they're holding on to the number one seed in the American League as they sit ahead of the second seed Houston Astros out west. In the third seed, Chicago White Sox, um, who are currently sitting on top of the Central. With this loss, the Philadelphia Phillies are now 63-63. and 63. <clears throat> That is the second best record in the National League East. They have now lost their last two games, and they've lost seven of their last ten. They currently trail the Atlanta Braves by five games in the division, and they now trail the Cincinnati Reds by five games in the playoff hunt as they are the third team on the outside looking in, trailing the San Diego Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals as well in that respective race. Jumping out to Toronto, the Toronto Blue Jays hosted the Chicago White Sox, and the Blue Jays were able to pull off a late comeback win at home. They won this game 3-1. to one. This game was tied going into the eighth inning. It was tied at one. It would be an Alejandro Kirk single to give the Blue Jays the lead, and then Randall Grichuk would walk, uh, bringing Bravik Valera home to make their lead two and have them walk away with their 66th win of the year. For the Chicago White Sox, the star was given to Lucas Giolito. He allowed one earned run in six innings pitch as he also allowed five hits in that span. He would strike out six batters. The loss would go to the White Sox second relief pitcher Aaron Bummer. Bummer uh, Bummer allowed two runs and .2 innings pitched as he started out but did not finish the eighth inning. He would strike out two batters on the day. Those are the two outs that he did get. And with this loss, he's now 2-5 and on the year. In the White Sox batting lineup, their their right fielder, Leori Garcia, would end up going two for three with a run on the day. He was the only player on the team with more than one hit. For Toronto, the star was given to Robbie Ray. Ray allowed one earned run in the first seven innings of the game as he allowed five hits in that span. He struck out 14 batters in the first seven innings of the game. The win was given to the Blue Jays' first relief pitcher, Tim Miza. Miza allowed no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck as he pitched the entire eighth inning and struck out two batters. With this win, he's 4-1 on the season. The save went to Jordan Romano, who pitched the entire ninth inning and allowed only one hit. This is his 13th save of the season. In the Blue Jays batting lineup, their left fielder, Corey Dickinson, would end up going Dickerson. Corey Dickerson went two for three with a with an RBI. He was the only player on the day with more than one hit as he would actually hit his fifth triple of the season. With this win, the Toronto Blue Jays are now 66 and 59. That is the fourth best record in, in the American League East as they've won four of their last 10 games. They trailed the Tampa Bay Rays by 12 games in the division and they trailed the Boston Red Sox by four and a half games in the American League wild card race. They are the third team on the outside looking in, trailing the Oakland Athletics and the Seattle Mariners at the moment. With this loss, the Chicago White Sox are now 73-55. and 55. That is the best record in the American League Central. They've lost, their, they've lost five of their last 10 games as they now sit nine games ahead of the second place Cleveland Indians in their division. In the playoff picture, they're holding on to the three seed, sitting behind the one seed Tampa Bay Rays out east and the, Houston Ast- the second seed Houston Astros out west. Jumping out to Queens, the New York Mets hosted the National League and the Major League leading uh, San Francisco Giants, and the Giants were able to beat the Mets 3-2. to two. They were able to come from behind. They were trailing 2-1 to one going into the top of the seventh. 
It will be a two-run double from Brandon Crawford to give the Giants the lead and the win, their 82nd of the season. For New York, the start and the loss went to Taiwan Walker. He allowed three runs and six innings pitch as he only allowed two hits in that span. He struck out three batters on the day, and with this loss, Taiwan Walker is 7-9 and nine on the season. In the Mets batting lineup, their left fielder Dominic Smith went two for four with an RBI, and their third baseman Jonathan VR would end up going two for three with a run. For the San Francisco Giants, the start went to Johnny Cueto. He allowed one run and 4.2 innings pitch as he struck out two batters. The win was given to the Giants' second relief pitcher on the day, Tony Watson. Watson allowed one earned run and one inning pitch as he pitched the entire sixth inning. He would allow three hits, but he would still pick up his fifth win of the season he's now five and three on the year the save would go to the Giants closer Jake McGee Jake McGee allowed no earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out a batter and with this save he now is 29 on the year in the Giants batting lineup nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit their elite third baseman Chris Bryant would go one for four with an RBI and two runs he hit his 23rd home run of the season with this win, the San Francisco Giants are now 82-44. and 44. That is the best record in the National League West. They've won their last four games, and they've won seven of their last ten. They currently sit two and a half games ahead of the second place, defending world champs LA Dodgers in their division. And they are currently holding on to the number one seed in the, na in the National League, as they and the Dodgers are the only team that have won 80 games this season. Uh, they sit ahead of the second seed Milwaukee Brewers leading the Central, and they sit ahead of the third seed Atlanta Braves leading the East, and that's what the division leaders are looking like at the moment. Uh, and that, yeah, like I said, that's where the Giants sit, as they have the best record in all of baseball. With this loss, however, the New York Mets are now 61-65. and 65. That is the third best record in the National League East, as they've lost their last two games, and they've lost eight of their last ten. They currently trail the Atlanta Braves by seven games in the division. Uh, and then jumping out to Cleveland, the Cleveland Indians hosted the Texas Rangers. And the Indians were able to pull off a 7-2 to win after scoring six of their seven between the fifth and eighth inning. Um, as the Rangers did not actually have a lead at all in this game. For the Rangers in this matchup, the start was given to Jake Latz as he also picked up the loss. He allowed three earned runs in the in 4.2 innings pitch as he was unable to finish the fifth. Uh, he would go on to strike out four batters in that span. And with this loss, he's 0-1 on the season. In the Rangers batting lineup, their shortstop, Isaiah kiner Falefa went two for five. And then their second baseman, or their second baseman, Andy Ibanez, went two for three with a run. And then their left fielder, Jason Martin, would end up going two for three with two RBIs and a run. He had his fifth home run of the season. For the Cleveland Indians, the start and win went to Zach Plezak. He allowed two earned runs and 5.2 innings pitched. He struck out four on the day. With this win, he's now 8-4 and four on the season. In the Cleveland Indians batting lineup, their left fielder, Oscar Mercado, with Oscar Mercado would end up going two for four with an RBI and two runs. He hit his third home run of the season. Their first baseman, Yu Chang, would end up going two for four with two RBIs and two runs as he hit his fifth home run of the season. And then their catcher, Austin Henches, would end up going two for three with an RBI and a run. Henches would hit his sixth home run of the season for Cleveland. With this win, the Cleveland Indians are now 62-62. and 62. That is the second best record in the American League Central. They've won six of their last 10 games as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by nine games in the division. With this loss, the Texas Rangers are now 44-82. and 82. That is the worst record in the American League West. They've lost seven of their last 10 games as they now trail the Houston Astros by 30 and a half games in the division. They're holding on to the second worst record into the Amer in the American League at the moment. Jumping out to Boston, the Boston Red Sox hosted the Minnesota Twins. And in a game that went to extras, the Twins would end up beating the Red Sox 9-6 to after outscoring the Red Sox 5-2 to in the top of the 10th inning. In the top of the 10th, it would be a two-run home run from Josh Donaldson and a three-run home run from Jake Cave that would just hammer this win home in for Minnesota. For the Boston Red Sox, the start was given to Nick Pavetta. He allowed four earned runs in the first four innings of the game, striking out five. The loss was given to the Red Sox closer, Hansel Robles. 
He allowed five runs in the 10th inning as he struck out one. With this loss, he's three and five on the year. In the Red Sox batting lineup, their second baseman, Kike Hernandez, went three for six with an RBI and two runs. He would hit his 17th home run of the season. Their designated hitter, Carl, Kyle Schwarber, went three for six with two RBIs and a run as he hit his 26th home run of the season. Their center fielder, Alex Verdugo, went two for five with a run. Their right fielder, Hunter Renfro, went two for five with a run for himself. And then their catcher, Christian Vasquez, would end up going two for five with an RBI. And for the Minnesota Twins, the start was given to Bailey Ober. He allowed no earned runs in five innings pitch as he struck out seven. The win was given to the Minnesota Twins setup relief pitcher Alex Colon. He allowed two earned runs in the ninth inning as he struck out one. He would pick up his sixth blown save of the season, but with this win, he's now four and four. In the Twins batting lineup, their right fielder Max Kepler went two for five. Their designated hitter, former American League MVP Josh Donaldson, went two for five with two RBIs and a run. He hit his 19th home run of the season. And then their shortstop, Andrelton Simmons, went two for five with an RBI and a run. With this win, the Minnesota Twins are now 55-71. and 71. That is the worst record in the American League Central and the third worst record in the American League. They've won five of their last 10 games, and they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 17 games in the division. With this loss, the Boston Red Sox are now 72-56. and 56. That is the third best record in the American League East. They've now lost five of their last 10 games as they now trail the Tampa Bay Rays by seven and a half games in the division at the moment. They're holding on to the second American League wildcard spot, sitting three games behind the New York Yankees holding on to that first spot. And they are sitting a game and a half ahead of the Oakland Athletics, who are the first team on the outside looking in. Jumping out to Miami, the Miami the Marlins hosted the Washington Nationals and in the game that was sent in the extra innings the Marlins would end the game in the 10th inning off of a walk-off single from Jorge Alfaro winning it four to three to pick up their 52nd win of the season. For the Washington Nationals, the start was given to Josiah Gray. He allowed two earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out seven. The loss was given to the Nats relief pitcher in extra innings, Kyle Finnegan. He allowed one run in .1 inning pitch as he walked two. With this loss, he's four and five on the season for Washington. And in the Nats batting lineup, the only player who had more than one hit was their catcher, Riley Adams. Riley Adams went two for three for the day. And for the Miami Marlins, the star was given to Edward Cabrera. Edward Cabrera would allow three earned runs and 6.1 innings pitched. He only allowed four hits in that span, striking out two. The win was given to the Miami Marlins closer, Dylan Flora. Flora would allow no earned runs and only one hit in the 10th inning as he struck out one. With this win, he's five and four on the season. And in the Marlins batting lineup, their catcher, Jorge Alfaro, went two for five with two RBIs. And then their center fielder, Brian De La Cruz, would go two for three. With this win, the Miami Marlins are now 52 and 75. That is the worst record in the National League East and the third worst record in the National League. They've won two of their last 10 games, and they now trail the Atlanta Braves by 16 and a half games in the division. With this loss, the Washington Nationals are now 54 and 71. That is the fourth best record in the National League East. They've lost six of their last 10 games, and they now trail the Atlanta Braves by 13 and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Milwaukee, the National League Central leading Milwaukee Brewers hosted the Cincinnati Reds and were able to pull off a 4-1 to one win, scoring three of their four runs in the seventh and eighth innings to create separation. For the Cincinnati Reds, the start and the loss were given to Luis Castillo. Castillo allowed two earned runs and 6.1 innings pitch as he was pulled in the seventh inning. He would strike out six batters on the day, and with this loss, he's now 7-13 and on the season. In their batting lineup, their center fielder Tyler Naquin went two for four, and then their right fielder Nick Castellanos went two for four with an RBI and a run. His 23rd home run of the season was the only RBI and run of the day for the Cincinnati Cincinnati Reds. For the Milwaukee Brewers in this matchup, the start and the win went to their all-star starting pitcher Brandon Woodruff. He allowed no earned runs in the first six innings of the game as he would allow four hits. He struck out 10 batters and with this win, he is now eight and seven on the season. In the Brewers batting lineup, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. 
Their elite left fielder, Christian Yelich, will go one for three with two runs as he had his 13th double of the season. With this win, the Milwaukee Brewers are now 78 and 49. That is the best record in the National League Central. They've won their last four games and they've won eight of their last 10. With that four game win streak is currently the best win streak in the National League. And that's the second best win streak in all of baseball. Tied with the Rays, by the way, behind the Yankees. And they've won eight of their last 10, like I just said. They currently sit nine and a half games ahead of the second place Cincinnati Reds in their division. Uh, They hold on to the second seed in the National League playoff picture as they currently trail the one seed Giants out west and they sit ahead of the three seed Atlanta Braves out east. With this loss, the Cincinnati Reds are now 69 and 59. That is the second best record in the National League Central. They've lost their last two games and they've lost four of their last 10. They currently trail the Milwaukee Brewers by nine and a half games in the division. And at the moment, they are holding on to that second National League wildcard spot, sitting 11 and a half games behind the first place LA Dodgers in that wildcard race. And they sit one game ahead of the San Diego Padres, who are the first team on the outside looking in, respectively. Uh, And then last but not least, speaking of the Dodgers and the Padres, the Padres would host LA, and in a game that would go all the way to the 16th inning, the Dodgers would beat the Padres 5-3. to I guess since it went 16th and 16 innings, I'll walk you through. Um, In regulation, the game was only 1-1, to as San Diego's only run in regulation came from an RBI single from Will Myers in the bottom of the 7th. LA's only run in regulation will come from a solo home run from Will Smith in the top of the eighth. And then both teams would go scoreless from the ninth through 14th innings. In the 15th inning, uh, Billy McKinney would have an RBI single and Trey Turner would follow right behind him. Uh, And then Fernando Tatis would have a two-run home run to tie it in the bottom of the fifth. And then in the top of the sixth, it would be a two-run home run from A.J. Pollock to seal the win for L.A. For the San Diego Padres in this matchup, the start was given to their elite starting pitcher, Blake Snell. Snell allowed one earned run off of three hits in 7.2 innings pitched. He struck out 10 batters on the day. The loss would go to the Padres' final relief pitcher, Daniel Camarena. He allowed he allowed four runs in two innings pitch as he pitched the 15th and 16th innings for San Diego. He would strike out one batter on the day, and with this loss, he's 0-1 on the season. In the Padres batting lineup, however, nobody on the team would finish with more than one hit. Their elite right fielder, Fernando Tatis Jr. would go one for seven with two RBIs and a run. Tatis would hit his 35th home run of the season yesterday. For the LA Dodgers, the start went to their elite starting pitcher, Walker Buehler. He allowed a run off of in, in 6.2 innings pitch as he allowed three hits in that span. He struck out eight batters on the day. The win was given to the Dodgers setup relief pitcher, Corey Kniebel. Kniebel allowed, one run, he allowed two runs in the 15th inning as he would strike out one batter and with this win he's now 3-0 on the season even though he picked up his second blown save of the season the save was given to Shane Green Shane Green allowed no earned runs in the 16th inning as he struck out two batters that was his first first save of the season in the Dodgers batting lineup their all-star third baseman Justin Turner went two for six with a run on the day additionally their catcher Will Smith went two for six with an RBI and two runs as he hit his 20th home run of the season like I said and their elite center fielder Cody Bellinger went two for seven with this win the LA Dodgers are now 80 and 47 that is the second best record in the National League West and the second best record in all of the majors. They are the second team in the majors to cross the 80 win threshold as they have won their last two games and they've won nine of their last 10. They currently trail the San Francisco Giants by two and a half games in the division. Right now, they are holding comfortably onto the top wild card spot, sitting 11 and, a, 11 and a half games ahead of the second place Cincinnati Reds in that race. And with this loss, the San Diego Padres are now 68 and 60. That is the third best record in the National League West as they've lost their last three games and they've lost eight of their last 10. They currently trail the San Francisco Giants by 15 games in the division. And right now they are the first team on the outside of the National League wild card looking in as they trail the Cincinnati Reds for that second wild card spot by one game. Just to give a sense of where the Padres are sitting. That is where the MLB 
That's what the MLB is looking like following yesterday's matchups and looking forward to what's going on today. Of course, starting at 105, Keegan Akin and the Baltimore Orioles are going to host Jaime Badia and the Los Angeles Angels. At 210 on ESPN Plus, Brett Anderson and the Milwaukee Brewers are going to host Sonny Gray and the Cincinnati Reds. At 307, the Toronto Blue Jays, led by their elite starting pitcher Hyunjin Ryu, are going to host Carlos Rodon and the Chicago White Sox. Rodon enters his matchup with a 9 5 record, holding a 238 ERA. Hyunjin Ryu enters his matchup with a 12 6 record, holding a 354 ERA. And just like the Reds Brewers, both these teams are competing for playoff positioning, so many eyes will be on this game. At 7.05, Zach Eflin and the Philadelphia Phillies are going to host the Arizona Diamondbacks, led by their elite starting pitcher, Zach Gallen. Gallen enters his matchup with a 1-7 record, holding a 4.59 ERA. At the same time, 7.05, Mitch Keller and the Pittsburgh Pirates are going to host Miles Michaelis and the St. Louis Cardinals. At 7.10, the Boston Red Sox, led by their elite starting pitcher, Chris Sale, are going to host John Gantz and the Minnesota twins chris sale enters his matchup with a 2-0 record holding a 180 era at 710 at the same time carlos carrasco and the new york mets are going to host alex wood and the san francisco giants alex wood comes into this matchup with a 10-4 record holding a 4-11 era at the same time at 710 sam henches and the cleveland indians are going to host jordan lyles and the texas rangers jordan lyles enters his matchup with a 6-10 record holding a 5.33 ERA. At 7.10 at the same time, Elise Hernandez and the Miami Marlins are going to host Patrick Corbin and the Washington Nationals. At 9.10, the San Diego Padres, led by their elite starting pitcher, Hugh Darvish, are going to host the Los Angeles Dodgers, led by their goaded starting pitcher, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is going to enter this matchup with an 11-4 record, holding a 2.65 ERA. Hugh Darvish enters this matchup with a 7-7 seven and seven record holding a 370 ERA as both of these former Cy Youngs take the mound. At 940, James Caprelli and in the Oakland Athletics are going to host Jamison Tyon and the New York Yankees. Both these teams are fighting for playoff positioning as well. Jamison Tyon enters his matchup with an 8-4 and four record holding a 394 ERA. James Caprelli and enters his matchup with a 7-4 and four record holding a 325 ERA. And last but not least in Seattle, Brad Keller and the Kansas City Royals are going to are going to face off against Yusei Kikuchi in the Seattle Mariners, the all-star starting pitcher for Seattle. With So that is what is going on with baseball as we take a look at what's going on outside of the world of baseball, uh, starting off at least on this continent. The MLS All-Stars are able to beat the Liga MX All-Stars, which is the Mexican Domestic League. Uh, they were able to win three. The MLS All-Stars won 3-2 to two on penalties. So, of course, they have bragging rights until the next game. Looking out to what was going on in the German DFB Pokal, Bayern Munich was able to be Bremer SV 12 to nothing. They would end up getting 12 goals from Eric Maxim Chupa Moting, two from their young German winger Jamal Musiala. Uh, they would end up getting an own goal from Bremer. They got a goal from their midfielder Malik Tillman. They got a goal from their elite winger Leroy Sané. They got a goal from their French midfielder Michael Cuisance, another one from Bonasar, and their French midfielder Corentin Tolisso. Um, so, of course, they will move on to the next round of the Pokal. This round specifically was, so this, this is the first round, so they will move on to the second round, the very round where they were eliminated last time. So I imagine they will not take this round or this stage of the, uh, of, of the German Cup lightly. Taking a look at what went on in the English Carabao Cup, Arsenal was able to beat West Brom 6 to nothing as three of their goals came from their elite uh, forward Pierre or their elite striker striker Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and one of their goals came from their French forward Nicolas Pepe, another from their French striker Alexandre Lacazette and then another goal from their English forward Bukayo Saka. So of course, with this win, Arsenal are going to move past West Brom into the third round of the Carabao Cup. And then, of course, there were Champions League qualifying matchups as Salzburg beating Bronby will secure their 
uh, passage into the next round. Sheriff Tiraspol drew against Dynamo Zagreb, and after their first win, they were able to advance off of aggregates. And Shakhtar Donetsk advanced past Monaco 3-2 to two off of aggregates after drawing today. And that's virtually what was going on yesterday, shifting the focus to what's going on today. Of course, even though it's not a game, the drawing for Champions League is going to happen today, and I will have an episode of it once it is complete. Um, but also, it'll be Europa League qualifying matchups. It's, that's what's really going on today, especially because today is really Thursday. And also, looking out what's going on for Europa League qualifying, Tottenham will compete against Paco de Ferreira as they are actually trailing on the aggregate to even clinch the Europa League so that's where Tottenham is but that's currently what's going on in the world of soccer and the world of sports for today today is Thursday August 26 2021 I want to thank everyone once again for listening to this piece I hope all is well and I'll catch you with another episode once all of today's matchups are done I want to thank the MLB ESPN and FIFA websites for the facts and figures I'm sorry if I butchered any names I do hope to get better with that as the time goes on but with that said I, I hope all is well and I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to my piece. I'm James Sims. This is The Elite, and peace out. I'll catch you later.